Hello everyone and welcome to this Amazon Lumberyard tutorial video. In this video we'll be talking about what components are and how to make a simple component. Before continuing with this video, I strongly recommend you watch our setup video to make sure everything you need is installed and set up correctly. Just before I explain what a component is, if you haven't already, open the project configurator, click create new, name your project something and choose the default and then click create project. If this is the first time you're making it, it'll take about two hours. If it's not, it might be faster, and it might not be though. Uh, once you do that, you can click Enable Gems and enable any gems you want, or you can create a new gem. But what is a component? Well, Lumberyard uses a simplistic entity model called the Components Entity System for everything from game objects to entire systems. Entities are just an ID, and then within them contain components. These components can communicate between each other using a messaging system called the eBus, which we'll get into in a future video. Components usually act independently of each other, but if one requires the component to function fully, you can require its service, meaning it will be prompted to add the necessary component before the other component gets activated. Components are essentially different parts of your entity, e.g. its location, a particle effect, a mesh, a character controller, etc. Now let's talk about how you actually make a component. First, um, if you haven't already, um, we I think we may have done this in the setup video, but open up the user underscore settings dot options file in the WAF folder of the dev directory, and set generate underscore vs projects automatically to true with a lowercase t. Then scroll down a bit and set use uber files to true with a capital T, and then scroll down just a bit more and set parallel links max parallel link to four. This will just allow us to build faster. Now open VS 2017, and if you haven't already, click that configure game button, and this will generate a game VS solution, which you can do open by clicking file, open, project slash solution. Navigating to your dev directory, going to the solutions folder, and selecting the game underscore VS 15.sln. Once you open that, you should see something like this. Now if you haven't made a gem to hold your code, then you just scroll down to the project name folder, and then you can go into the source directory and see what files you have there. I've made my own gem, so we'll just go into the gems and then find the gem name and go to that instead. Now to add a new C++ file, you'll have to go into the directory. So for my gem, that is dev gems playground code source and then I made a folder called components to hold all my components. If you're doing this with a project then it'll be dev, your project name, gem, code, source, and then you'll be back to what well, uh, it'll look something like this at first without those folders. So you can make a new folder if you want, go into it, and then we want to make two new files and have them be .cpp and .h with the same name. Next you want to open the .waf file, so it'll be your project name or your gem name .waf underscore files, um, and you want to add those cpp and .h files like so. So you add, a, if you made a new folder then it'll be, you'll have to do source slash components colon square brackets, and then within that put those new files in like so, so source slash and then components slash blank .cpp. Once you've done that, click configure game. This will open up a command line, and once it closes, after a while a window will pop up asking if you want to reload the solution. You want to click on reload the solution, and this will essentially add those CPP files into this directory. Do not just right click here and then choose add file. That is not what you're supposed to do. It'll Because these are virtual folders, they're not actual folders. Once that's happened and you've reloaded your solution, Open up the .cpp file and the .h file, and we'll get started programming in the .h file. First, we make sure our .h file isn't included multiple times by accident, by adding hashtag pragma once. Then, we include the component.h file from az core to inherit the key component features. Next, we put all our code in our gem slash project namespace by doing namespace project slash gem name and then brackets. Every component must include AZ components somewhere in its inheritance ancestry. Non-editor components generally inherit directly from AZ components, so we do this next. We do a class and name it something, for instance, blank. Comp. Then we do a colon on the next line, public, and AZ colon colon component. Beneath that, 
we do some brackets and the last bracket will automatically have a semicolon added to it. Now we do the following, which is just more setup. Within the class that we made, we do public, colon, and then beneath that we do a squiggly line, blank comp brackets, space override, equals default, semicolon. Every component must specify the AZ component macro in its class definition. The macro takes two arguments, the component type name, a unique UUID. You must use any UUID generator to produce the value. Visual Studio provides this functionality through tools, create GUID, and then you have to use the registry format setting and then copy paste the value that is generated. So we do this, AZ underscore component, and then within some brackets, we put blank comp, comma, because that's what I've decided to name my class. And then within some speech marks, we go to tools, create GUID, registry format, and then click new GUID, and then copy. Now paste it into the speech marks, and the brackets will are included automatically in what we copy. All components are AZ reflected classes. Because all components must be serializable and editable, they must contain a reflect function, like so. We do static, space void, space, reflect with a capital R, brackets, az, colon, colon, reflect context, star, space, reflection, semicolon. To define a component's behavior, you generally override three az component functions, init, activate, and deactivate. We do this by doing void, space, init, brackets, space, override, semicolon, and then we do the same but replacing init with activate or deactivate. Init is called only once for a given entity, and it requires minimal construction or setup work. Since the component may not be activated anytime soon, an important best practice is to minimize your component's CPU and memory overhead while the component is inactive. In the activate function, it's called when the owning entity is being activated. The system calls your component's activate function only if all dependent or required services are present. Your activate function is always called after any components that it depends on. In addition, the component makeup of an entity never changes while the entity is active, meaning if you want to change what components are on an entity, you have to deactivate the entity then reactivate it. In deactivate, it's called when the owning entity is being deactivated. The order of deactivation is the reverse of activation, so your component is deactivated before the components it depends on. In general, deactivation should be symmetric to activation. Since we also want our sample component to have a text field, we create a string entity in a private part of our code. To do this, we do private colon, and then on the next line, azstd colon colon string space m underscore sum property semicolon. Overall, your .h file should look like the image on the screen. Now let's move on to the CPP file. First, we have to include all the things that are required for our component. So we have to include the pre-compiled header for our gem slash project, in this case, playground. Then we have to include the .h file we just made. And then we have to include serialize context.h and edit context.h from az core. Next, we put all our code within a namespace called playground or whatever your gem slash project name is. And then within that we do void space then our class name colon colon reflect and then in brackets az colon colon reflect context star space reflection close the bracket. Then we have to do the squiggly brackets and within that we do the next line which essentially is just more setup and it links the, that code over there with azrtti underscore cast, which is annoying to type, into serialized context. If serialized context is equal to true, it means we need to start setting up our components in the editor. Thus, we do serialized context and then the class, and then az colon colon component. We set the version to one, and since our component's going to have a, an example property in it where we can type stuff, we're going to create a field, call it example property, and then link it to the string the string that we made in the .h file. Next, we set up edit context to equal serialized context get edit context, and if that's true, then we need to set the class element, the attributes, and a data element for that example property that we're going to have. 
Finally, we actually give the functions that we inherited from component, that being init, activate, and deactivate, something to do. In this case, since this is a blank component, we don't actually need it to do anything. But here we'd connect to other buses and then create functions that we can call, etc. Now, before we build, we have to open up our gem slash project name module.cpp file, include our .h file, and then under the m underscore descriptors.insert thing, you have to put your class name, colon, colon, create descriptor, co uh, brackets, comma. This will just make sure that our component's actually recognized by the rest of the Lumberyard system. Now you can build. Make sure your build settings are set to game profile, x64, and then you can click the local Windows debugger button. This will build your project solution. When it finishes building, you may get a pop-up saying that it couldn't run something because it wasn't a proper Win32 program. You can safely ignore this and open up the editor once it finishes building. Do subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, and comment on what you'd like to see next. Thanks.